Welcome back to Chemicals Knowledge Hub TV, your one-stop shop for industry insights and interviews. Joining us now is Prasad Raja from LGM Pharma. Prasad, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Indeed, my pleasure, David. So um, I hear on the grapevine that LGM Pharma has just announced its acquisition of NextGen Pharma Inc. Congratulations all round. Um, as with any acquisition, tell me about how those two companies' uh, areas of activity are going to complement each other and, and what that means for LGM's uh, business development. Oh, lovely. Uh, thank you for having me on. And, uh... Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to tell the story. Um, strategy wise, look, LGM Pharma is a supply chain uh, expertise company, uh, moving APIs from anywhere that you can find the right qualified vendor into all our customers in the United States and various customers in various different fields of uh, pharmaceutical drug development. So a uh, couple of years back, uh, at the inception of LGM Pharma coming together with private equity partner, um, we had a strategy. And the strategy was we have a wide variety of customers from various regulatory pharmaceutical drug development field. We are over 400 customers and we are now trying to service them. What would be the best way of doing it is now getting into a CDMO. We are supplying API how about making their drug products for them? And the drug products were, could be anywhere from fill finish to solid dosage, a small molecule, large molecule. And so with that strategy in mind, NextGen Pharma was a perfect fit for us. It has uh, manufacturing facilities, it uh, produces drug products, it has a proven track record of launching successful uh, drugs in the market in, in a generic, um, branded and that is how this whole thing is going to come together as a value proposition for the customers so with the combined power of of those two uh, companies would you say that lgm pharma now has a complete portfolio of technologies and and services to to support ongoing development or are there other other areas that you're still looking to be active in or, or looking to acquire in very good. Yes, indeed. So we, the short answer to the later part of the question is yes. We will continue to look for other uh, service segments, other services we can offer to the customers. Um, mm -hmm. few, but for the larger portion of some of the service segments, now we will be able to offer, if not at least 90% or maybe 70% of drug development aspect for drug to be launched successfully. Uh, but some of the areas that we still are going to consider are one in the fill finish because we don't sterile fill finish. That is one area that we want to get, get into enter. Organic versus acquisitional is always a debate, but uh, to expedite the growth, we might go up acquisitional route. Uh, analytical services for uh, small and large molecules, especially that is another area of interest that we have, and we will also consider that. But in a nutshell, what we want to make sure is we continue to, to offer to even the current customers as much as we can. We have a large base in compounding pharmacies, and we don't want to forget that that API movement of bringing them from, uh, uh, from anywhere that we can find for drug shortages, especially we bring that mm -hmm. on to, to the customers and continue to build and grow on that. How... In, in your opinion, how fragmented is this section of the, this, this part of the, the, the business, the, the industry at the moment? And, and do you see a general move towards consolidation, you know, like, like what's happened with Big Pharma over the last decade or so? Um, yes. In, so EDMO world has seen in the last decade a lot of consolidation. The role of strategy for pharma services continues to happen. And, and I think it will continue to happen, especially uh, from two points of view. One is the smaller players are getting consolidated um, mm -hmm. into the largest CRO CDMOs. And there has also been 
a lot of carve outs of the big pharma that have occurred whereby they have given up that drug development aspect while have focused more on bringing to the market as a value proposition, which they are really good at big pharma. And so that we have seen a decade of almost smaller players getting consolidated into larger CRO CDMOs. That strategy will continue. The main, main thing about how LGM Pharma is trying to position is not necessarily all the advantages of being a large one-stop shop jargon is going to serve, has served customers in their entirety. And so many customers, we are, we are uh, talking to the same customers, many times they say we are getting lost in this very large CRO CDMOs and we don't get the customer satisfaction that we really look for with the expertise of the smaller players who were really good at what they were doing, being rolled into large company is being able to offer. We want to be cognizant of that. We want to make sure that we hear these customers as well as those who want a larger customer, larger continuum of services at the same time. That's how we intend to manage that part. But the consolidation continues, especially because demand continues to rise. So just casting your mind forward a little bit, Prasad, how, how do you see uh, pharmaceutical contract services, the sector developing over the next few years? And, and what are the main pressures that you think that it's facing as well? And, and how are you hoping to manage those? Um, so David, what is going to happen is look, the demand, as I mentioned earlier, the demand for CRO CDMO services continue to be very strong. Uh, I mean, the healthcare sector, no matter which way you, you slice it or dice it and the cost, uh, I mean, the demand from the human population to live better, to live healthier, to live longer is always going to continue. And so is the medicine world. So on, on a larger scale, that demand has always been low. The market sectors, you can, the services sectors has been calculated anywhere from 80 billion to 120 billion. No one knows exact numbers, but nonetheless, it is large. Uh, in US and in Europe, the number of compounds, the new chemical entities coming to the market have been large. The, the trend has been upward trajectory. And the funding in the biotech, where many of the comp uh, new chemical entities really origin, has been astronomical in the last five, six, seven years. And so in general, when you have so much coming into the funnel, somebody got to make this in a compliant quality fashion. And when somebody got to make it, the big pharma has carved out their assets on drug development while CRO, CDMO world continues to grow and consolidate. So overall, that demand is very strong in this sector. That's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is how to then manage this properly because there is also a debate about and, and a very recent debate, especially on shoring of the product or reshoring of the products back in United States or how much comes from offshore, how much APIs are coming from the rest of the world. That debate can continue. That debate will continue. And the, it, it, the, the, it swings on either side. But the basic necessity of having a partner a good partner for all these pharmaceutical drug development companies is going to be crucial and critical. And so we want to focus and LGM will continue to focus on that customer aspect, partnering smart aspect, giving the feeling to these customers that we are extension of their team and not try to be everything to everybody. We want to maintain that that expertise and niche in the areas and continue developing that and offer to more customers and wider customer base. Prasad, terrific stuff. Listen, we are out of time for today, but thank you very much indeed for joining us, taking time out of your busy day, and I wish you uh, every success in your future moves. Thank you very much for considering us to tell our story. Thank you very much again for joining us. And there are many more interviews with industry leaders right here on Chemicals Knowledge Hub TV. See you soon.